Rewind and Digress is a fakechimp.net podcast proudly presented by Viewlorium. Alternative movies, alternative streaming, totally free at viewlorium.com. Welcome to Rewind and Digress, where we hit pause on the now and track back to one of our favourite films. Commit ourselves, attempt to work it out in therapy, receive a little shock treatment, smear our faecal matter all over the walls, and gently remind ourselves as we rock back and forth that it's only a movie, only a movie, only a movie. I'm Jarrett and I'm here with Glenn and Sean and we're FakeShemp.net. On this episode, we're rewinding back to 2001 to discuss Brad Anderson's largely unseen and supremely unsettling Session 9. Hello, Doc. It's underrated, but it's almost underrated because no one's really heard about it. I do feel like it has a cult following, mm. though. Like a lot of people in the film circles know it very well yeah. and regard it highly. But yeah. that's mainly on the internet, yeah. Though, or do you think is there people you speak to, like you know, locally in Australia that speak highly of it or no? It's sort of like it came out silently here in Australia. It was released through MRA and it was pretty much released to really low fi release totally as well. came out on VHS yeah. and then like maybe 6 months later came out on DVD yes. and they had the I remember the MRA slick was reversible because you had the original poster oh. and then you flip it over it's the original poster with David Crusoe's face looming yeah. over the asylum I've never that's seen that other art I should really? have bought it with me yeah I've got it as well yeah. that's the one the that I have yeah, yeah, no yeah. idea Look, for anyone that hasn't seen the film, then you probably shouldn't listen to this podcast. It was going to spoil a whole lot about this movie. So you can pause it and come back to it later. Otherwise, we're going to fuck it up. And here's the synopsis from the film. This is off the back of the Scream Factory Blu-ray, which I'll discuss a little later in the podcast. Okay, it looms up from the woods like a dormant beast, grand, imposing, abandoned, and deteriorating. The Danvers State Mental Hospital. Closed down for 15 years, it's about to receive five new visitors. Donning protective gear, the men of the Hazmat Elimination Co. venture into the eerily vast and vacant asylum that is filled with an evil and mysterious past. Rampant patient abuse, medieval medical procedure, and rumours of demonic possession are just some of the many dark secrets the hospital holds. But then so do each of the men. It's a fucking great synopsis. It's it a actually good one. feels like it's written by a writer, yeah. not just well, by like some yeah. dude that's trying it, to like summarise the It is, the but it kind, of, it kind of makes it read like this is sort of a... a, a Cliched, riddled film, but it's it's it couldn't be it, it, it couldn't be further yeah. from cliched. Like yeah, yeah, this absolutely. has Super this original. avoids every trope and cliche in the book, Super which original. is why I love it the most. You know, it's unexpected completely. Yeah. It's unexpectedly uh, rich. You know, uh, it's an odd one because because like you say, nobody's ever heard of it, mm. so it's very hard to discuss it. It's very hard to to sit around with other other film fans or cinephiles and 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 work out exactly what the film is. In fact. Outside of you two, I don't know anybody else that's seen it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I have a I have an idea of what I think the film is and maybe what it's about, but I feel like that's kind of at odds as to what the internet says that it's about. Because right, you, right, right. I get the feeling that most people think it's this kind of eerie, creepy, almost supernatural, but it just doesn't play like that for me. No, what, what does that's it feel the, like? That's the beauty of it. I think what it's you're, hard to categorize. Yes, you're, I know what you're saying. There's a lot of online. You know, message boards and what would say it's like the greatest sort of uh, haunted asylum film there is. Yeah, it's kind of like a haunted but asylum. Yeah, but but I think those people say that knowing damn well what it is because it's it is that, but it's done in a very low key, modest way, very yeah. dramatically yeah. focused. Yeah. It's not a trope driven cliche. No, no because it kind of it plays with the tropes and the cliches, yeah. but yeah. never exploits them. Like you know, yeah. it's all there, yeah. but it's very subtle, and you don't pick up on yeah, it. Yeah, the delivery yeah. is very different. As yeah, to how it sort of does that. When I first saw it, when it first, first, first dropped back in 2001, uh, I hated it. Why? Right. And so how did you actually come about the was that? Because, was that it? because of the digital aspect of it? No. I, re- I remember yeah. being really excited about it because it was around that time there was a company called uh, Indigent, Independent Digital Entertainment, and they were sort of the forefront of this digital... Uh, at the time, it was just HD tape mm. revolution, things like Pieces of April or... Oh, um, yeah, personal velo- personal velocity, and there was a whole bunch mm, of them yeah. were shot in HD tape. 
and Session 9 was one of the ones. And it was one of those ones that really got me excited. I heard about it before it released because I was like, oh my God, they're shooting on HD tape and, mm-hmm. and, and I can afford HD tape and I can do mm-hmm. something like this. It was one of those films like, mm. you know, if they can do it, it's within my grasp kind of thing. And then when I finally saw it, I was just like, they, they, when I first saw it, I thought, this film's a mess. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it wants to be. I don't know where it sits. I don't know. So as a result, yeah, I haven't watched it since. It's really interesting you say that because I was in film school when this one came out, yeah. and I had a similar reaction. I loved it from the get go, yeah. but I thought to myself, "Shit, man, I can make this film. Like, this is just you know, camera, yeah. you know, little mini DV camera, and I've got that, and I can do yeah. this." Yeah. But I've you know watched it maybe seven, eight times since, yeah, right. and there's no fucking way I could replicate it this. It's a no. pretty complex film. Yes, like just it in is. In terms of the design, I think it's years ahead of because it's it's it's. Having said that, you the know. design is mostly stuff that was already on location. Oh, no, not so much the production design as, as to how they assembled the, the psychology. Film in post. Yeah. Like when you watch the film, you're like, there's exposition that's told through the tapes themselves. But the sound design and yeah, okay. accompanying that, the, the tapes and how the film unfolds, it's just, it is really constructed extremely well. And it yeah. seems like someone, you know, you'd like, you'd like to think they knew what they were doing from hmm. the very beginning or whether it all kind of came together in post. But it, it, it's almost a new way of storytelling, you know. It's linear, sure, but the way it's constructed is very different from anything I had seen, and I probably didn't appreciate that seeing it the first yeah. time. And years later, you're like, "Wow, what a way to tell a story!" Okay, yeah. elaborate that for me, because mm. I mean that that's a big call. But so, so yeah. wh- why do you? What makes you think that it's revolutionary in its structure? Well, I just think that at the time, you know, I, I personally had not seen a film where so much of the story is being dictated by, you know, one of the characters listening back to these tapes, events kind of occurring concurrently with, you know, what's hearing on the tape or a foreshadowing of what's to come. It's, it's, it's I don't know, it feels more like I think a it has a lot, or something. A lot to know? do with the pacing, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. too, the one thing that conjures in my mind, I don't know why, because we're in this dank kind of environment, mm. I kind of visualise carrying like a wet, heavy mattress, right? right? It takes a long time to get it where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of film meanders in that kind of way, you know, and it's just sort of... It's it's it, unsettling, I feel, yeah, though, too, it, because it kind of... It's take, foreboding. It, yeah, it catches you off guard because I, I have no idea where it's going. You've got this clunky, clanky kind of soundtrack that is... At, as, as much yeah. adhesive as it is disjointed, yeah. deliberately. Yeah. And I think all of that combined, like mm. you're saying, that's the tapestry. It's really oh, yeah, rich it's and rich. layered. It's and layered. Yeah. That's the thing. It feels like it's it, it's really brilliantly structured. Just those mm. things, those elements that are all put together. It's like, you know, you can watch a film, you've got like a, you know, a pretty normal score about it. Um, you know, the narrative goes this way, the characters interact that way. A lot is left up to the tapes, yeah. up to you to kind of well, this is what's happening before me and, okay, you kind of got to pe- put the pieces together. I mean, yeah. it's not hard, but it's an interesting way of storytelling. And it's, it's not all just dialogue-based. Yeah. There's the dialogue. And you, and as a viewer, you don't really know which horse you're backing yeah. until the end of the film because I'm like, well, no. And, and it's red yes. herrings, but it's more that I, I, I'm thrown because I, David Crusoe, he seems like a bad yeah. guy. Or maybe he's on Does a level. He? Yeah, he totally he does. does. Yeah, yeah, because he's mixed with those two guys by the dumpster, and you're like, "What the fuck's going on there?" Like, yeah. and they the they setup leave, is you know? the setup is that the older bloke is the one that we're supposed to sympathise with. David Crusoe yeah. is the antagonist. Yeah. yeah, and you know they play that almost to the end. Right and to it's, the end, to that sequence, and you, and you and don't pick up. I mean, you get the finale, you get the conclusion, but yeah. it's not until the second viewing that you really pick up on all those, of course, yeah, aspects yeah. of it. Yeah. And that is just like the the constant. Um, What's the word? The constant conflict between those two characters, of course, yeah, it's is firing. what builds that tension, right? Yeah, through. absolutely. And ninety percent of the film is pretty much at the asylum. Those flashbacks that you never really know why you're seeing them until yeah. the end, and then it makes sense, and you're like, "Oh shit, okay." And then you factor those flashbacks in with the phone calls, and mm. you know, it's, yeah, it's so and dense. It's weird though because I thought, "Am I just bringing the first time I watched it? Am yeah. I just bringing my disdain of?" Um, of old mate, old ginger, McGee, NYPD blue finest. <laughs> yeah, we're um, talking about Chris. Am I bringing that to this movie that I yeah. think he's just such a, a fucking asshole of a guy? See, because that, that... He was an asshole. But he was. Yeah, yeah he I've was. I've heard he's yeah. a complete dick. Although on this film, Brad Anderson actually said he was all right to work. Yeah. With, you know? But his character's a dick. But that, yeah. that's... See, that's... that's my, I, I took away something very different from you two. I took away, for the first two thirds, mm. it almost... You know, about halfway through until until it really starts to unspool at the end. I thought Session Nine was just a great character drama about a guy whose life is spooling apart. Hmm. 
and I think this is where my where my my my, my disappointment with the first viewing was is that I feel like Peter Mullen I mean Peter Mullen is incredible an incredible actor, Great actor right he just acts everybody off the screen on this he's an right? actor of his generation oh, in his yeah. movie in particular yeah, yeah absolutely like, more so in Tyrannosaur train spotting yeah, he's, yeah yeah Mother Superior but he's so good in this yeah so good um, that watching this guy just lose l- lose his mind piece by piece by piece by piece the first time I saw it I remember thinking it's such a rich character drama with such varying co- levels of conflict within mm. all the guys, mm. where I never really thought that David Crusoe was a bad guy. I thought he was just like an but honest he's so guy. Shifty throughout mm. it because he's yeah. constantly saying like, "I've got this friend that wants to come." He's in lying and get him on all the, the time, job, yeah. all the time. And then the other guy goes missing. And he's like, "Oh yeah, no, I just you know spoke to his partner." And then later on, obviously, he goes, "You know, you all heard me." It's like, "Well, no, you spoke to him. None of us heard. Yeah, we well, yeah. say anything." But that, but that again, all that, that stuff that doesn't shifty. That he's doesn't come until the, the the last. Yeah, but no, no, but throughout it, he's setting. It up because oh, he's yeah, like, oh, of I've got these friends. Yeah, yeah. You're, you know, you're whatever relation into it to he is. I don't know if it's his nephew. Yeah, or yeah, something. yeah, nephew. Yeah. You know, he's he's useless. He's bad news. You know, he's yeah. no good. You know, we'll get my friends on the job. And he's always doing shit like yeah. that throughout the movie. And well, you're kind of yeah. like going, God, David Crusoe's a bit of an asshole. Like, That's how I took got it. Him the yeah. gig See, I always, I always thought was just like backstabbing I, him all the time, talking about him. Oh no, you know, he's gone around the, you know. Uh, I, uh, when again, bring it back mm. when I, when I fir- when I first saw it, then I thought. This is a really rich character drama right. that just has this sort of weird horror shit like stapled onto it, like tacked onto the side that it just didn't need. Right. Of course, that's why I didn't like it the first time. But now I watched it again. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, oh my god! Like this is this is the this is, is an incredible example of of a guy like I say coming apart at the seams. Mm. And it's not supernatural. Like I just had the wrong. Well, I just had the it wrong. Is a bit. It, it is. It is. <laughs> well, it's definitely still supernatural because the yeah. final. You know, words in the film, you know, when it's saying it says it chooses the weak and it, you know, it takes yeah. them, you know, it takes them and they're the... Because well, he's possessed right yeah, from day one. the soul it can take to make them okay. do things. Let's oh, yeah. jump forward yeah. a little bit. Like, am I, am I reading the finale wrong? Let me just right. put it out there. Okay. Is he possessed from day one and right. he goes and murders his wife and child on day one? No. I no. F- I, no. I feel that's like how that's, I see it. that's a stress thing that's happened in his life and then he's come into come into it and what what i what i the way i read it was is that like you say the 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 asylum for the lack of a better expression the asylum finds the weak mm. and mm. the 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 breakdown in communication the breakdown in relationship with his wife is what leaves him weak so that when he shows up yeah that's the vulnerability that but that that is existing from the moment he gets there and yeah i, I think no, I that see, I see the what demon yeah, or yeah. whatever it is the entity latched onto him when he got there Yes. And that mm. all the phone calls he's making throughout the film are to no one. Yeah, there's no yeah. one, right? Because he's already done it. Yeah, but he's, yeah, that's it. He's yeah. done it already on he's day already one. He's done it, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. has he done it before he arrives? I feel like he's done it before he arrives and he carries it because he's that, that's a massive, like, because his life's at a breaking point. I feel like it is because we see the flashbacks, but it feels like all those But that, that doesn't make sense to me it. as far as well, the demon latching on. From the very get go. I with you going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so you feel like that event day one. happens I feel, I feel after like after the first day there, he yes. kills his wife. Yeah. 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 I feel like he's 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 stressed with a new kid. He's almost losing his job. You know, yeah. he's he's got these employees that all yeah. fucking hate each other, you know, like he's vulnerable. Right, right, right. Then when he gets to the asylum, the asylum latches onto him, lat- and then he goes recognizes, and kills, comes back, comes back day two, one. and that's yeah, when all right. the weird shit starts happening because his mind is now because he's already yeah. Because yeah. I can't remember in placing the timeline if there is any cuts to him sitting in the car and watching prior to the events of the film. You know, on that first day, if you do see any of those scenes, I'd like to go back and watch it now because now I'll be going. Mm. Oh, did I, you see I, any of I those believe scenes? I, I feel believe that's what the final that's what the thing final th- that's at. what the final yeah. the final sequence of Monday is. He is rocks him. up in his truck and in there's truck, elements that have flower. existed from the, yeah, he's got the from flowers. the asylum, yeah. like on yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah, you're yeah. right too. Yeah, God. I think that's what they're yeah. hinting at. That's, but I could yeah. be way off. Like it's it's no, so open to interpretation anyway. Oh, I think I'll have to sit down and watch it again anyway. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to sit down and watch it again as well. Now, obviously, we just discussed Sean's first time. He 
how did you sort of happen about? It so you have, were studying at the time? Uh, yeah, I was in uni, but so I... were you over in Canada No, no, this, no, this was or? in RMIT in Melbourne. Right. Okay. And I would have been working at a video store at the time, just uh, doing casual yep. work. And yep. it would have been a new release that came through and flew under the radar, but I probably would have picked up a preview tape of it. Right, right. And gone, whoa, what the fuck is this? And I immediately latched on to Brad Anderson as a filmmaker. Right. Yeah, he yeah, is yeah. like, for me, I kind of liken him to like a mix between M. Night Shyamalan and say right. Vincenzo Natale. Do you know that yeah. guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, Cube and yeah, Cypher because and like Shyamalan, Splice. he had made two comedies first Splice, before he right. then got sort of pigeonholed into this whole weird thriller kind of director. And his thrillers are left of centre like Shyamalan's. And then mm. you've got the Natali stuff where you know, they're also left of centre. And I don't know, I just put the two together and I feel like that's what Brad Anderson is. A lot of hit and miss with his films mm. over the years, mm. but yeah. I've sort of enjoyed watching that trajectory anyway i've always enjoyed his films yeah yeah i like i agree with you they're, they're not always they don't always work well, i think i think he kind of hit his peak with trans-siberian well most people would agree the machine has put him on the map right oh yeah definitely. yeah and yeah. trans-siberia i agree but it, it's kind of like a, a clunky film there's there's a bit of disjoint stuff going on it was on a good yeah. film but yeah. I, like when i saw it it wasn't like i i sourced that film because it was brad anderson yeah. i watched that film and then i was like oh it's, yeah i looked up later i was like oh it's that guy see that everything guy, yeah, i've yeah. watched of his has been that anticipation new brad anderson right, film up okay. until right. the new one beirut which i got the other day and Same. didn't know it was him right. until i looked at the cover Did and you i'm watch like it? no i haven't watched I haven't it yet seen it. I, I was trying to watch it before I really tonight i wanted to see it as well yeah but i mean even like vanishing on seventh street and the call and stonehurst I asylum i watched i will only watch that for the first time stonehurst asylum that's interesting because it's another asylum piece yeah i've always kind of avoided it because of, because of the Millennium Films tag, Ooh, I've always yeah, it? yeah. But it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. It's I've a, got to watch it. The yeah. reveal is very predictable, right? But it's not so much about the reveal. It's about just what goes on up until that point. It's it's not bad. I'll watch any of them with Kate Beckins though. I think she's really underrated. It's interesting to watch it with Session Nine in mind. Yeah, but right. yeah, 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 yeah. The I'm call was good as well it. though. I like the call. I didn't yeah. mind. That was the Halle Berry one, though. Yeah, yeah, that was actually really yeah, good. Yeah, it was, it was you, WWE you, Studios. Film. Yeah, you because yeah. you tagged me. You tagged me for it. You go, yeah, I, I think you actually really. I like think we talked about that on the podcast. And what bothered me about that was her hair. Oh yeah, like a, oh like wor- a fro. Yeah, it's the worst yeah. fro ever. That didn't really upset me too much. I was pleasantly surprised by that movie. Yeah, so was I. Yeah. Too. And there lies a the digression. Uh, yeah, well, it's pretty early in the piece. I was going to mention uh, the first time I saw this film was because a friend and I were having a conversation, and I'd said I hadn't heard of the film. Um, I said, oh, you know, like we're talking about craziest place I've ever been. I was like, oh, it was in Massachusetts back in like 2001, 2002. And uh, we went to like this asylum. And it was fucking terrifying. I was like, you know, Massachusetts is a scary place anyway because that's all, you know, it's old Salem, mm. you know. A um, lot of rich history. It's one of the most haunted places in the entire world. Um, but yeah, like we were staying with a family, a friend of mine, Bill, disabled Bill, Bill in the wheelchair. And uh, so Bill and I were on a road trip. How many nicknames the US. does Bill have? <laughs> <laughs> Good old Bill. And we were on a road trip around the states, and uh, we stayed in Massachusetts for a couple of days. He had some um, family friends. We stayed there, and and the chap that uh, we were staying with said, "Oh, I'm going to take you to some crazy places," because I was like, Massachusetts is pretty pretty yeah. boring. Uh, and he took us to the Danvers State Hospital. Nice. You know? And we got into the grounds right up until you know there's a gate right before you hit it. And we got up there and, you know, I'm, I'm filming it. Bill's taking photos. Is there, wait, is this wheelchair Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's taking some photos. He's not driving. The other guy's driving it. I fucking hope not. He, he can a wheelchair. use arms. <laughs> yeah. The best part about it is, I, oh, no, he does drive though. He drove us all around the States. Oh, really? Yeah, he does all the driving. It's all done with the hands. Oh, the paddles. Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I still don't have my license, so of course he's doing the driving. You still don't have your license? No, but this is like, now, well, this is Do you 2002. Know this is 16 years ago. No. <laughs> No, but we'll save that for the License to Drive podcast that's coming up on Rewind and Aren't you like 56? You don't have your license? <laughs> that's not <laughs> happening. But it could. That'd be a good one. If you're interested, yeah. we could do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we go up the way up to the gate and then suddenly out of nowhere, a security guard comes out and he's like, right, stop. And he's like, you know, you can't be here. This is private property. And we're like, oh, but we haven't, we haven't gone through the gate or anything. He's like, this whole entire driveway is private property. Um, you know, where are you from to Bill? And Bill's like, uh, Australia? And he's like, have you got a passport and identification? And Bill's like freaked out and got the passport out. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> and then next minute, I need your driver's license from the driver. And, and you, sir, where are you from? And I go, Australia. And he goes, you got a passport? And I'm like, no. And he's like, have you got a passport? And I'm like, 
no and he goes you better answer me right the third time he goes because this could you could be deported and i was like yeah yeah, i got a passport and then we hand it all to him and takes could be could be deported by a security (laughs) guard (laughs) takes all our details down right (laughs) takes all i'm I'm 20 for trespassing 22 you're 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 20 stupid is what you are like and (laughs) he's taken all the details down right Mm. and then he says to he also has a gun, so and he yeah. Go, yeah, he does actually because it's America. Yeah, and he says, uh, and it's Massachusetts, mm. and uh, we could have been killed. <laughs> and he says to, uh, he says to the driver, he goes, you know, he's got all our ID anyway. We're not going anywhere. He goes, okay. He goes, I'm, um, I'm taking all these details down, and you know, have you got any, you know, have you taken any photos? And I'd already put the camera like down here and kicked it under the seat. And uh, Bill's like, oh, yeah. And he had like this clunky old digital camera. It was massive, massive digital camera. It was fantastic. It used to save to 3.5 floppy disks. <laughs> yeah, no, it was huge, huge. Like an underwater looking camera. <laughs> and Bill's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I took photos. And he's like, well, you know, delete them. I need to see you delete the photos. You can't have any of the photos. And so he had to delete all the photos. And he turns to me and he's like, have you got a camera? I said, no. And he goes, have you got a camera? I said, no. And he goes, answer me the third time. And you know, I said, no, definitely not. And I was like, fuck, did you see the video camera? Did you see the video camera? It's like, okay. And I was like, oh, cool. I could have gone away with the passport all along. Oh, I know. Held out. <laughs> anyway, he took the details and he said, look, you know, this may not go any further, but I still need to write a report. So you may hear or you may not hear anything. And I was like, we were already like a bit freaked out so because you you were you weren't even in the property. Were we you? were technically because but oh right because I'm it's a, um, it's a massive driveway. It was off the road and you followed gotcha, this big driveway gotcha. up. We hadn't got into you know where mm. the, the the building is at itself, but we were right at the gates and so we were on private property. I'm pretty sure he broke the law by taking all that shit off you. Oh well, no, he gave he gave us our IDs back, obviously. But no, yeah, he's like pretty much, you know, removed the. Photos. I love this guy. He's like a troll, just yeah. hiding behind the gate, like waiting. For I know. I was mean, no, he's, <laughs> he's been waiting ten years for this I moment. Know. I know. <laughs> I was waiting for the moment where like he gathers up all your IDs, and at the end he goes, "Ha, psych! Here you go. Here, I'll just open the gate for you. Just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, head on in. Come um, on in, guys." Like, freaky thing was though. he was a patient. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> well. It was obviously, it obviously was closed. It closed in 1992, I think. Right. They like I said, it eventually, yeah. Um, but I love it. Imagine if you did actually get in, and then there was like an actual security guard. It goes, <laughs> "Oh, you must have met Crazy Steve down the front." Like, yeah. <laughs> Can I get your IDs? Like, Crazy Steve's got them. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm going to ask you that again. <laughs> Crazy Steve's flown. Uh, he's flown the coop. But anyway, you go back and he's just wearing a baseball hat with a propeller on top. <laughs> <laughs> We we uh we went back to the place we were staying that night and Bill's like, you know, we're like, Oh fuck, that was you know, that was freaky and he's like, At least you've got that video I was like, Yeah, I got the video, I got the video, it's great. Um video cuts out honestly there's no word of a lie. Video cuts out as we're heading up the fucking drive, well before we hit the gate, it just cuts out and then video picks up as we're heading back from maybe around the same part, um, which is well after I'd picked it up. It's like weird parts where it starts and ends. Yeah. And Bill and Archie was like, there's, there's nothing there. And it's like, you know, did you, you must have hit stop. And I was like, I couldn't hit stop. Like, well, fucking, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he's like, oh. And we're like, oh, that's creepy. So we have no fucking memories of having been there. That's we because were, Crazy we Steve has his out. laser gun. And he's <laughs> been pointing at you, you coming up like, the driveway. Like, crazy Steve. signals or whatever. And he's <laughs> yeah. just like. <laughs> crazy like Steve that. doesn't have a pistol. He's just got a giant magnet in his yeah. pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so yeah, I was telling his friend. And he's like, oh, yeah, they made a movie about that place. I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah, session nine. I was like. No, and he's like, yeah, made the movie, made the movie, and then yeah, it took seemingly took a long time to come out in Australia. I think it was like maybe it came out in VHS in two thousand three, but it didn't come out in DVD till about two thousand four ish. Was it that um, long? Really? Yeah, it was like it was ages because I looked it up straight mm. away. I was like, oh my god, yeah, I got to see this movie. Um, and so going into it, it was like, yeah, well, it's going to be. I thought it was going to be a story about the actual Danvers State Hospital itself, which yeah. actually I do want to talk about a little bit. Um, but then, of course, it's its own story. So the first time I was kind of a little bit disappointed because I was like, oh, it's going to be a story about that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's its own thing. Came back to it years later and um, I was just like blown away, like really blown away the second time because I had not, I don't think I'd seen anything quite like it. It was like for a genre film. Yep. Yeah. It's storytelling. I suppose it's, there's a know, good chance that there were some different. of those like, you know, Uber super fans that might have been trying to trespass all the time because of the movie was there. Dude, and, you know, that's f- why they put a security out there. It is funny you say that because on the, uh, I'm jumping a little bit ahead, but on the Screen Factory Blu ray, uh, there's a guy named Sean Clark. He does these special features on um, most of the Screen Factory mm-hmm. sort of retrospective horror stuff called uh, Horrors Hallowed Grounds. And he goes into the old, you know, places where they shot the films and does a comparison between what it looked like then, what it looks like now. 
he's a bit of a mad fan for it. So he went there, I think it was actually probably maybe about two years after the movie was made. So mm-hmm. it was after I'd been, and but he got in, obviously they broke in, yeah. filmed a bunch of stuff. Um, and then for this Blu-ray release, had pulled that from the archive, gone and seen as much as he could. But they, they fucking destroyed the place in 2000. It's and demolished, isn't it? 2007, yeah. yeah. It, was, really? it was heritage listed. Yeah. But somehow, you know, development, yeah. always these things happen. They they demolished a good portion of it. Um, so, yeah, this new feature radio is only able to get a bit, but he goes back to the archives and you see and you see how much cool shit they left from the film. Like, yeah. they'd, they'd written on the walls and stuff like Brad Anderson. They've had this bit where, you know, underneath they're all written, but they'd left props and stuff there, like some of the po- um, pictures that were up in... Um, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's her name? Mary Mary's room? Hobbs. Mary Hobbs. Yep. You know, some of those pictures were there and he took one of the pictures. Is he couldn't remember if it was in the film or not. He's like, oh, I'm going to take that. And then he went back and watched the film. He's like, oh, fucking it is. It's awesome. It's a bit of a good keepsake. But yeah, it's sad to think that it's not there. But I just want to talk about the Denver's It is an extraordinary hospital. building. It's beautiful. Like, yeah. the architecture is Oh, my incredible. goodness. Have you, like, Jared and I have been through a few of these in Australia. Have you been mm. through, like, no. Aradale or Beechworth? No. We've got places exactly like this. Really? Yeah. Oh, even yeah, even yeah. as close as La Rundle over in Bundura up until yeah. maybe five to ten years ago, just like that. No joke. Yeah. I've been to the uh, the one in... It's Aradale, yeah. Aradale, That's the yeah. one I stayed at for two nights or so. And I never got a vibe of March. Like, we did the ghost hunting and we stayed, liter- we stayed there on site for two nights. Um, didn't really get anything. I yeah. got more being at this place <laughs> before the security guard jumped. Us. It just it was a really kind of eerie, weird feeling. I was mm. like, oh, this is kind of like... See, I, I go into these places awkward. with that Access Paranormal mob um, yeah. every now and then. I've oh, got another yeah, one yeah. at Aradale coming up in a few months. I don't go in there for any of that like paranormal stuff. I go in yeah. just for the atmosphere. You go oh, in there yeah. and the atmosphere is palpable. Like, you know, it's yeah. just, you can feel the history. You don't, it's mm. not supernatural yeah, or anything, yeah, yeah. but yeah. cause you know, you're, you're told what happened in this wing, what happened down in this basement mm. and all that kind of stuff. What's in this morgue and you know about the death tunnels and all that mm. kind of stuff. It's just eerie being there. And I love going in at nighttime with the lights off. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's and it's just experience. like this asylum. That's what these ones are like. And they're still there. It actually looks a lot like the Victoria Police uh, Police Academy Barracks in Glen, right. Glen Waverley. Have you seen that building? I have been oh, there no. yeah. twice for graduation. Yeah, yeah, it right. looks exactly like that. When I when I saw inside the, and out. Yeah, when I saw the <laughs> film, I was like, oh, also the police barracks up in Glen <laughs> Waverley. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, so the the Denver's State Hospital. It's known as a few different things: the Denver's Lunatic Asylum, the Denver State Insane Asylum. Has changed names obviously yeah. over time. Things PC considered a little bit yeah. insensitive. I love the term lunatic though. Like I think yeah, in I horror think so films, too. and you know, yeah. lunatic is a great term. Yeah. Maniac's a good one as well. It is. Yeah. Lunatic makes it feel Maniac very. Asylum. Very like um, diabolical. Yeah, lunatic does sound like a little bit crazy. Yeah, really. I'm <laughs> oh, mad, mad for it. No, I'm you a, fucking no, sounded like Scooby Doo there. Oh, I was going to say, are you being served? But <laughs> I'm okay. in a yeah, totally. <laughs> um, look, the the state hospital itself, like it was opened back in 1878, and obviously, like the synopsis sort of said, there was some pretty primitive means of therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing too is, throughout the 30s and 40s, the place was known for overcrowding. They had like some of the patients were living in subterranean tunnels. Jesus, um, like it was ridiculous. The tunnels in the film, the ones. Yeah, that they yeah. Been it's like, like yeah. yeah, I think it was like registered that there could be like now I'm not 100, percent but it was say a few hundred of some sort allowed to be in there, and they had like 12,000 you know that lunatics. Twelve thousand, yeah. ridiculous. And that's that's the ridiculous. population of the types in in Victoria too. Mental. The thing with the overpopulation would have been like no a massive <laughs> would have been like a massive tuberculosis outbreak or something is oh, why God, that yeah. that existed. Oh well, there, that was the other thing too. Instead of because there was so many people in there, they were performing lobotomies, yep. just prescribing drugs because they couldn't deal with the crowds. It wasn't mm-hmm. that the people needed this treatment. They did these things to people just make to room. try and yeah to make room. And it's horrible. But, you know, eventually, obviously, it was shut down. Like, it, it took a long time for it to be shut down. They shut down wings over, yeah. you know, over time, but it didn't really shut down until 1992. I imagine, mm. obviously, the practices had changed over time. But, um, obviously, it's got a rich history of just awfulness. Mm. Um, and it's one of those kind of places you, you can feel that. Mm. You know? So, when you watch that movie, you're like, God, it would have been a terrifying experience being on that film yeah. and shooting it. When these asylums and places shut down, they tend to get bought out by universities. And yeah. the universities then use them for other means, but yeah. sort of don't do anything to them. Like just because there's yeah. one of them because um, VCA is um, obviously Melbourne Uni, but Melbourne mm. Uni owns an old band. Well, NMIT hospital. own the ones in Victoria. Do they? Yeah. Right. Because yeah, because yeah. there's a lot of student films shot in all these abandoned hospitals. Well, that scare campaign was. Oh shot yeah, at that was. Yeah. That at Arrowdale as yeah. well. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Um, no, the other thing I was going to mention about it was, um, which I I don't think I've read on the internet unless you've read it, but I did see it in one of, I did watch all the special features. I watched the film twice, once through, obviously, mm. once with commentary and then all the special features, but it um, wasn't mentioned on the commentary track, which was ported from the DVD in mm-hmm. 2002 or whatever. Oh, um, my, my DVD doesn't have a commentary. I know, the MRA one has check. no special features. No, it has special oh, features. Has oh, yeah, it, it has a couple of profiles yeah. probably. I didn't, I didn't go that far yeah. into the menu. Animated Bear menu. Bones, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love those. But the, um, CD-ROM. Yeah, there's a, there's a special feature on the Blu-ray and the cinematographer, the female cinematographer that worked on it... Um, Uta she or something? Was, what's that? What was the name? U- Ooh, Uta or something? I can't remember, to be honest. Something like that. Um, she Beautiful was almost looking. blinded. Yeah, she's stunning. Not um, her, the film. I've never oh, no, seen no, a picture sorry, of her. Sorry, yeah, she's quite pretty as well. No, she is. <laughs> really? um, but she was almost blinded. Like, um, some something sort of came out, went straight through like the, the viewfinder of the camera and straight into her eye, went pierced through the eye, and then I think it was pretty close to maybe you know, punching... Something there that's fatal. Oh, art she imitation. From the life imitates art. And then have to rush her off. And yeah. And like imagine a cinematographer being blinded. Like well, that's that actually the worst That happened on Maximum Overdrive. We talked about that, remember? Yeah. With the lawnmower and the wood chip going into yeah. the cinematographer's eye. And yeah. he only ever made one film after that because he couldn't Horrible. see. Horrible. It is a beautiful looking film, though. Like it is. Credit, credit where it's due. Like think, it think, is a beautiful But it's unusually film. beautiful because of the digital I agree. Element. I think that was yeah. something that was sort of hard for me to overcome on DVD and it's weird now watching on Blu-ray because it was obviously shot in HD but it's also it's not the kind of film that will look amazing in full, on a 4K TV yeah. Yeah. That because you're going to see that it's whatever you know was it was it 1080p it was shot it was like it was, it was HD a, it was the it first was, film it of its format I can't remember was it 26p 24 24, 24. 24. it was the first it was yeah. Brad yeah, Anderson reckons it was the first, first theatrical, theatrical 24 full frame HD yeah, digital right. film because yeah. it, pre, it predates once Upon a Time in Mexico and mm-hmm. predates Star Wars. It was the same camera they used, in the Sony camera they used on the Star Wars. Yeah. Mm. There was like a first gen of a Sony. It's like the Cine Alto yeah. camera. Yeah. yeah, it was like... It was like crazy. Yeah. Crazy and camera. and uh, if you can tell it looks digital, but it is superbly handled yeah. for a, for a, yeah. for a it's, HD. It's, it's the way it's lit. That it's just, it's yeah. the lighting that yeah. comes down yeah. to it. So yeah, having an experienced cinematographer, the lighting, the steady cam, all these things, these factors, yep. and it, it makes it look good. It, it's a little bit unsettling to start with because you're like, why is this sort of... And there's like concentrated close-ups and things that make you, you know, like... Yeah. What but I then th- like, you just kind of get used to it and then you embrace it. Yeah. What I think helps too is there, there are scenes where um, it's moving flowing fairly fast and they're going from one room to the next but one room's pitch black the next room's light the next room's pitch black the next room's light yeah it gives like you he's going through of the gym and it's light yeah. totally. the tunnels are dark and then he's going through like an old spa area and it's yeah. light then it's dark and I think that boom 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 it just makes it really kinetic and really yeah. you know, frightening makes you feel like you're almost turning pages in a yeah, book makes totally. you feel like you've got momentum behind you yeah, yeah. and I think that accompanied with that sound design that really scrapey sort of sound design where it feels like they've Use different sort of instrumentation, kitchen sink you know. and shit like yeah, that. Totally. Yeah, totally. It's, it's, it's a very sort of unsettling sort of thing. It's and they're almost hyper real at times. Which yeah, I, you know, it's like a Tom finds. Waits application of music. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very, very cool. Dreamlike nightmare states. Yeah, sort of almost thing. David Fincher, but on a very low budget. Yeah, 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 like a like yeah, like a restrained Fincher on a little bit of pocket money. Yeah, know, yeah. See how much what you can do with it. Um, yeah, it has. A, I think it has a very distinct style to it. And it's weird too because. I mean, does Brad Anderson have a particular style? I don't really think so. I think he, has it, he has so. shapes the films as yeah. what they require. I think he time. just has an overall aesthetic yeah. that runs through his films, like Shyamalan does. He has a gimmick, like the right. gimmick for Shyamalan is the twist ending. Yeah. Whereas yeah. I think Anderson's gimmick is just taking something normal and making it not quite normal. Yeah, you're right, actually. Like, yeah, that's how true. I sort of see like it. Like skewing the story yeah. slightly just to make it seem... Yeah. But it's oh, weird that we talk about because The Machinist is a very similar film to this film. Yeah, very much. Which is weird. Yeah, I've never I haven't thought seen, about it. Again, the, the Machinist is another one. I haven't seen that since theatrical. Well, The Machinist is like, um, it's performance piece and shock value that really sort of sells that one, right. which I think is a bit different to Session Nines in some ways because you know, this one is much more just the aesthetic and drama. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, because I remember when... when no, I was waiting for because he's going to come in with the performance. Well, no, because I remember when, when, when The Machinist came out, the mis- I felt like Machinist was like unfairly compared to something that was like Fight Club or it was like, right, yeah, remember, or sense. Donnie Darko or something like that. There was like all these unfair comparisons and I'm like, I don't know. I don't mm. know. I don't know. What, like outside of that kind of twist ending, because it did have a twist ending, didn't yeah. it, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah. Outside of that yep. twist ending, 
there's nothing like any of those films. No. And it was every, everybody did the same thing with uh, Donnie Darko and uh, the butterfly effect. Where it's like, butterfly effect just wants to be Donnie Darko. I'm like, why? Like, how, yeah. how did you get to that point? And I felt the, f- the same thing. And I felt like it really did a disservice to The Machinist. Yeah, I think it was, it, was a, it was a better film in and of itself than it, de- than it deserved the comparison. And then when Freeze Frame came along, that was compared to The Machinist. Like, it's all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freeze Frame mm. was really it's good fantastic. as well. So That's really, Freeze Frame. Yeah. Yeah. really underrated. If you like this kind of film, you'll like yeah. that. I'm pretty sure I've got it in one of my lists on Amazon Prime, Stan. Yeah, it's Netflix, well worth one it. Of them. Do even it even yeah. just as an exercise in, in just utilizing form and format, like it's it's worth it. Great performance. Mm-hmm. Lee Evans is so good in it. Eloin is the place to stream cult movies for free. Like I'm talking mutated sharks, mega storms, exploitation, low budget indies, and shit tons of other stuff. Eulorian boasts a huge selection of the good, the bad, and the weird in between. Fakeship.net uses their service. Mm-hmm. Guilty as charged. Be rad like them. Eulorian. Alternative streaming. Visit Eulorian.com. Like, what right now? Can you believe it's December already? The year has absolutely flown and we've come to the end of our series of Franchised. Yes, that's right, we've reached our destination and we will be putting the show to bed. Look, we've had a great time doing it and we hope that you've had a great time listening. We do have one final episode to go and we will be looking back at the Warlock series. That is Warlock 1, 2 and 3 starring Julian Sands and Bruce Payne. It is a favourite of ours and we intend to bring the show to an end with a bang. But don't fret, we have exciting news because we will be returning next year with a brand new show that is guaranteed to hit the spot. We have a fun new theme that's going to carry us right throughout the year and we cannot wait to let you in on our secret. So make sure you join us for our final episode of Franchise and be sure to subscribe to our podcast for all new episodes and heaps and heaps of fun. But for now, let's get back to Rewind and Digress. Oh, we're just on a note of style now. Glenn did jump forward a little earlier where he mentioned the, uh, you know, the production design of the hospital because they utilised pretty much everything. I think they almost did, everything yeah. in the film was already there. They yeah. might have rearranged it in some way. That's it. Yeah. The only, I think the only thing they brought in was maybe the Wheelchair. hydrotherapy sort of stuff. No, I think that was there. It just wasn't where it was. And the know? um and like the hazmat suits hanging in the corridor. Yeah, and stuff which like they that. left because when they fuck. when they went back and that did that would be terrifying to walk into. Oh my that, God. that was all there when they went back in whatever it was two thousand. Three two thousand four and did their first you know video. I wonder if that was all there. It was there before this film. Surely not. No, I think that was all set up for the yeah. production of the film. Yeah. Surely, yeah. You think so? Yeah. Um, no. So yeah, what else I was going to mention was um, Mary Hobbs' room. Obviously, they put up you know the the weird sort of montage of photos all across the world uh, walls and whatnot. And it was like news clippings and things of that. On the commentary, Brad Anderson actually mentions what he was trying to do was set up this creepy sort of... This is actually a direct quote here. What I was trying to do was set up a creepy sort of juxtaposition of images that represented happiness and joy with images of abject poverty, sadness and tragedy as a way to allude to like the split personalities. Mm-hmm, okay. You know, which is like pretty nice sort of thing. Split personalities? Yeah. Well, the main character having yeah. a like, tormented... Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the breakdown. Putting yeah. on this face and yeah. being like that. And whatnot. Yeah, okay. Actually, you know what I haven't mentioned? One of the funny things, one of the things I do like about David Crusoe is, I mean, David Crusoe is fine in this film. I think he's fine. I like David Crusoe. I think it could be anyone else in this movie yeah. that's got talent. Hang on, hang on. Say his name slowly. David Caruso? Yeah! <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be anyone that's talented that could yes. be playing this role. Though, I love the way he smokes that joint. <laughs> when you find out that's what he was doing when he was hanging out with the two street kids by the fucking yeah. dump bin and buying weed and that was what his vice was. He was getting that weed and he's smoking the joint. Oh, it's like, he must be a tight pack joint because he was getting uh, some heavy Yeah, he was out of really it. trying. He was really smoking the yeah. shit out of that oh, I joint. Know, I, I know you've got something to add to that, but can I just right. say my favourite David Crusoe moment, which I think is the most absurd moment in the whole film, is when mm-hmm. they first get to the asylum and they're led inside by the owner. Yeah, right, yeah. And he's explaining stuff to them and he's saying to them like um, this room was done for hydroshock therapy and this room was done for electroshock therapy and David Crusoe goes sounds like you've done your homework <laughs> it's like he fucking owns the place yeah, of course no, he no. knows what those rooms it's are it's a fucking bar yeah. what do you think it is <laughs> exactly. what's that used for right. mm, I don't know <laughs> washings <laughs> things yeah <laughs> Oh, fuck oh yeah, and there was the chapel. It was like yeah. you know, it was like a self sort of like little community that was there. Over there is a cemetery. We put bodies there. Yeah, you've done your yeah. homework. Yeah, you've done your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Good God, <laughs> what a scene! What a scene! Favorite scenes? Anyone? 
Uh, yep, you go first. When Peter Mullen admits to David Caruso that he hit his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Peter Mullen... Just Peter for Mullen's, the performance? Oh, like, he is just... He, cha- he channels just greatness in everything it'll be my second favorite performance of his my favorite is tyrannosaur, tyrannosaur. Yeah. yeah i agree incredible tyrannosaur so that. Yeah, that is not a light yeah. one it's a heavy that's one it's oh. got, i had it on dvd and it's just it's, sort of like do you remember the right frame of mind do you remember yeah, like war zone and yeah, yeah it's like yeah that. that's what i figured and kneel by mouth it's that kind of thing really, really it's got olivia coleman who i adore mood. oh she I is amazing her. she's just olivia coleman's in it yeah god yeah i really do like her yeah yeah i really like her so if she's getting beat that's gonna be really it's not pretty but yeah. Peter, Peter Mullen is he, I mean, he's a great director in and of himself have you ever seen in the films he directed Orphans or oh, The Orphans? Sisters is Orphans the one from the 80s no okay. late 90s maybe early 2000s no, set in Glasgow like, three. Oh, The Orphans is very funny the one I've seen no so no, no the, this, one, one. this one's I've three. seen The Orphan is yeah, I've seen the Orphan. Right. Oh, yeah. Is that Friday the Thirteenth, the Orphan, or, <laughs> no. or is it just Orphan? Leonardo DiCaprio produced one. I don't or, know, whatever. Or he did. He did one. Uh, he did one in two thousand and ten called Ned's. Ned is like the the Scottish equivalent of, of like a bogan, a mm-hmm. non educated right. delinquent. That's is that one a comedy? Like. No, it's a drama, no, okay. and it's about a ki- it's about a kid. <laughs> in his, of Ned. It's about a kid in his teenage his, his late teenage years who starts to fall in with the wrong the wrong crowd. Right, 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 and. Oh my God, he is as talented behind the camera as he is in, in front of it. Like it's well worth. But that was something that I that I brought up because Session Nine seems like, in some ways, it seems like a very Peter Mullen because there's mm. so much rich character there for him to grab a hold of and 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 work with, right? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, he doesn't have anything else in his catalog that comes close to to this kind of piece of genre filmmaking, right? right. Yeah. And the film he made before this was called The Claim with my, uh, was a Michael Winterbottom, Winterbottom. film. Mm, yeah. But he's with on Wes rec- Bentley. I with think. Wes Bentley, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think uh, there was like somebody else, Mila Sarah Yovovich Polly. or something like Sarah that. Sarah Polly, yeah. isn't it? Be- again, beautiful looking film set in snowy, snowy, right. a snowy western. Anyway. Yukon. Yukon. It mm. is Yukon as well. Uh, yeah, the Gold Rush, of course. I love the digression part of this show. I know. Yeah, this well, he's doing yeah. it for me. Boom. <laughs> but he, uh, he, 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 he's on record for saying that he showed up in The Claim for the right. paycheck. Because the next film he was going to make after Orphans was called uh, Sisters Magdalene or oh, the Magdalene yeah. Sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, because he was writer, director, producer, blah blah blah, he basically just showed up in the claim to help pay for this independent production. Right. But it makes me wonder: Did he show up in? And I, and I know the budget to, to Session Nine was only like a million and a half or something like right. that. Did he show up in this just for that extra? Hundred grand just to chip in towards the the next film project or something because it's such a diversion yeah. and the rest of his canon. I'd be very curious to try and find out. Actually, I, it feels like it was written for him. It does mm. because yeah. he just grabs hold of it and he just he he knows what either to do that with or it. he was given a lot of leeway to sort of play with the script. Yeah, but he's a uh, yeah. My name is Joel. He's in that same mm. kind of territory. Really deep, mm. heartfelt mm. stuff. Like, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Where Would you're you like at. to know my favorite scene? Yes, yeah, go I've on. got two. Okay, first one. Undeniably, it has to be when Brendan Sexton, he's the young guy with the mullet. Warren from one of your favourite films. From Empire Records. Yes. He acts the same in every film. Have you noticed that? Like, yeah, he's, he's got the same yeah. thing they going. put a mullet wig he's on him. Good on him. Yeah. <laughs> he looks great. But, um, no, there's a scene where he's he's uh, trapped in that corridor oh and God, all yes. the lights start oh, going out, yeah, right? This great. is the same corridor that has all of those hazmat suits lined up, which yeah, is eerie yeah, enough. That's good. But then when the lights start to go out because the generator mm. fails... Mm. He's running away as the darkness is chasing him, yep, yep. and the darkness slightly overtakes him, yeah, and yeah. he's screaming to bloody high heaven, yeah. and it's just a terrifying moment oh, because great. Brad Anderson doesn't beat around the bush. It's yeah. like it happens like lightning. It's it so fast. fast. In most movies, the tension's built because yeah. you get the boom, yeah. boom, boom, and all the lights go out. This one's like... Yeah, it's like it's fast. Yeah, and they chase the shit out of him, and that is fucking it's, terrifying yeah Very and the other one would be when josh lucas gets lost when he goes into the maze of corridors oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he kind of loses where he's at i just yeah. love that scene i think that's really creepy too. josh lucas looks pretty cool in this film like a cool dude he does yeah. not like red dog where he just looks like a lame foreigner on the outback. Is he wearing contacts in this one? He's got really dark eyes. I don't know. Oh, no. Sort of hard to say. He popped Sexton the third. What a name. What a name. Josh Lucas, this was the time where Josh Lucas showed up in that David Gordon Green film Undertow, wasn't it? It was it was about the same time, I feel. Well, I think he was in um that Alabama movie with Reese Witherspoon. Oh yeah, Sweet, Sweet Home, Home Alabama. Alabama. Wasn't that yeah, same year? Been, oh, around, around then. About right like about two, the same I think time. it was like two thousand two, two thousand three. Have yeah. you seen Under Undertow? 
No, I got I, to check I it have, out. Yeah. yeah, he's awesome. Isn't he? In hasn't it? he got a handlebar mustache in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bike he's mustache. awesome in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so good in it. Same yeah, mustache, probably, in that. this film. It's almost certainly the same mustache. Mm. Yeah, in that fact, mustache yeah, has yeah, got credits, cool. man. There you go. Yeah, on yeah. IMDb, it's got its own trivia. <laughs> um, no, I was going to mention too, because wasn't he? He was in American Psycho. He's in a very small part. Very American small part. Is he one of the business guys? But that was back. Yeah, he's the one when they're talking about what is it? Oh, they're talking about yeah, something derogatory toward women. Yeah, right. Um, but that, was, that, that would have been 99, 2000? Yeah, about 2000. So maybe yeah. about a year before this, yeah. Because yeah. I, I have never really seen, I've not seen Undertow, I've never seen Josh Lucas in March. This was like a springboard era for him where he was yeah. just, yeah. Where he just coming into traction. never quite got anywhere, really. Just kind of hit this Bubbled, and that was yeah. peaked. And yeah, but he's still a known name. Like yeah. you say Josh Lucas, you know who you're talking True. about. You know, but so he's he, no Brennan Sexton the third. No, he's not. No. 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 So few actors Brennan, are. Although he did turn up in three... Um, Three billboards. Yeah, of course. I was going to mention yeah, that. Yeah, I just remembered that then. Well, As a similar kind of character. Yeah, he was pretty much. A weird haircut. He was in Boys Don't haircut. Cry. He was in Black Hawk yeah. Down of um, Empire Records, obviously in Pecker. Yeah. Remember John Waters' film Pecker? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But right. I always I confuse this one for yeah. I can't remember his name, but the guy that's in the um, Uber Bowl um, Rampage series, the main guy. Yeah, I can't. What's remember What's his name? name? He's in like Band of Brothers, a Spielberg production. Anyway, that sure. guy. Reminds me of this guy, and I get them confused all the time. Yeah, uh, easy, easy the, it's the, not guy, the guy from Going All the Way is it? It's not that guy. No, not the guy from Spanking the Monkey. No, no that that's guy. Jeremy Davis. I love that guy. Oh, yeah, Jeremy he, Davis. Million Dollar Hotel can't go wrong. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah. He's a good actor. Um, I don't really don't have much more to say about this film. Brendan oh Fletcher. no, no, I will. Brendan I will Fletcher. mention. Actually, yes. I, I haven't said my favourite scene. Of course, I'm going to tell you about that. It's the scene on the stairwell with Brendan Sexton the third, of course, <laughs> and and Josh Lucas. It's like when he's like, "Hey, man, you know, like what's going on?" You're like, "Yes," and like and he's just like there, and he's he says, "Oh, you know, uh, you know, Is what are me? you doing here?" Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. And it's like because it starts off and then it just gets creepier and creepy. He's like, "Oh, I've got to go and get something," and it's just like, and he's holding something. He's holding the coin. Coin. And it's just this fucking creepy scene. He's got the sunglasses and he's like staring out the window. And it's just like really yeah. unsettling. It's like, where's this guy been? Like, what's going on? Like, Well, I love that scene too because I think that's the point where Brendan Sexton the third actually starts acting properly. Like, yeah, he's just yeah. a goof off. And then all of a sudden, his dramatic turn. Yeah, yeah he's, got, moment, he's got depth all of a sudden. Yes, yeah. which was sorely missing beforehand. Yeah. Although, like, if, if I were him and I were like, you know, hanging out near the van and I saw whatever relation old mate is Tim Swanee from Transporting, and he's coming at me at a fucking super speed I'd be like well this doesn't look like a good situation I'm putting myself it's in a, a pretty if you, either of you guys start coming at me dude, like looking pretty aggressive covered in blood face, I'll yeah. probably I'll probably it's, be inclined to run it's Why a pretty clunky image Swan Swanee 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 yeah. Swanee was that his name? Yeah, that's his name. I thought it was Mother Superior. No, that's yeah, but they they, they call it's it a nickname. Swan. Yeah, yeah the two nicknames. Yeah. Right, I got you. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. yeah. But right. there's an interesting Did scene. Did he turn that up in Train Spotting too? I don't think so. Can't. Re- yeah, no. I think he does. Does I think he? I feel like maybe he does. And he's doing the same thing. He hasn't gotten out of the cycle. I think. I could be. I only watched yeah. it once. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so I've got to revisit that. But that so scene, that. that scene you're talking about. Um, there's that moment when uh, Brendan Sexton the mm. third, oh, I fucking it's love such saying a great that. Name. It is. Let's say it again. When he's uh, Brendan Sexton the third is exhausted and he collapses into the side door yeah. of the car and he pulls out the Oreos and eats it. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's little care for me. But <laughs> that scene right at the end where you see the flashback to pulling up at the house, yeah. he has Oreos in the top of his shopping bag. Yes. Yeah. Like, so it's indicating that yeah, that moment true. in time. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's not a whole lot more I want to say about it. Like, I've got a bit of a wrap up, but is there anything you guys want to address about session nine? Just, I'm, I'm for one, I'm glad that I got it, that I, that I mm. had an opportunity to go, a reason to go back because, yeah. like I say, I saw it when it first dropped 15 years ago. Yeah, really disappointed with it at the time. Obviously, in hindsight, it's because I didn't get it. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, but I'm, I'm very glad that I got a chance to watch it again. And I, I'm, if I'm being honest, I think I'm probably going to watch it again tomorrow. Mm. Which will be the first time this year I've watched the same film twice Excellent. in one week. Well, you can have that context right. in mind to see how it plays out. Exactly. Yeah. I like, did watch you know, it twice, once with the commentary, and I still. You might have to do it a third time with that. I in mind. definitely want to. I think do I'm going to watch yeah. it soon, not yeah. not tomorrow. Yeah. I've got shit to do, man. I got yeah, shit to do. That's true. I'll probably end up watching The Machinist, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I was going to say is what it's probably going to end up doing is, is giving me a top. Brad Anderson. Yeah. yeah because I haven't up. seen Stone. Actually, Beirut. That's what I'm Yeah, I haven't seen Me Stone. too. Yeah. There we I go. I haven't seen Beirut and I haven't seen Stonehurst yeah. and I haven't seen Machinist since it dropped. What about so. Next Up Wonderland? That was his first film. Yeah, because the first two films that he did were like. Parker Posey? 
drama was comedies she in that? though. Oh, I love Parker Posey. Was she in that? I can't remember. I did. I, I was it Roadshow release. I feel like it was yeah. a Roadshow release around the same yeah. time as Shooting Fish. Like it was I that like kind of right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I Parker Posey just released a Stuart Parker Townsend. Just, who was yeah. that? Who was the other actor? Kate Beckinsale. Oh, it wasn't. No, no. The other male lead. It was sort of like someone that looked like they were going to be. Big and then never really went on to much. Do you remember that was a Video Easy exclusive? It was. Yeah. I saw it in the movies. I saw it theatrically, and then when it came on video, I had to join Video Easy to rent it. I remember I really rocking up to work, and we had like three hundred copies of it. I'm like, Jesus Christ! And we yeah. couldn't even flog them off as X rentals. Really? No. Nah. Nah. I, 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 I went to Video Easy and put an X rental. Of it. <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll call oh that's where that one went. We thought it was stolen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stuart Townsend was an odd cat, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he was. He, he looked because he's a turned director now. The original right. Aragon, yeah, like yeah. He, he didn't age he was, so well, yeah. did he? Because he ended up balding and he looked a bit weird. Really, did he? Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen a picture. He, of he was receding and then kind of went weird. I don't know if he ended up wearing a toupee or something. The ex Mister yeah. Charlize Theron, he um, right. he was he was involved with Charlize Theron for years and years and years, mm. and he did that battle in Seattle. Have you seen that? About no, the, 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 no. the protest that got out of hand in the street. It's not bad. I mean, right. it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. But he, his, one of his first films when he was back in Ireland was called Resurrection Man, and it was, he played a hard, hard, hard Irish gangster yeah, yeah. Um, who committed some crimes. And you know James Nesbitt, mm-hmm. that, my yeah, favorite actor. Is he really? He is. He's so good. He's a he's a investigative journalist looking into the story, and Stuart Townsend. Stuart Townsend's awesome in it. Yeah. If you haven't seen Resurrection Man, do it. It's, it's it was weird. He had a kind of weird career trajectory because I thought he was going to be blow up and be huge, and then he kind of just well, he would have movies. been if they had kept him in Lord of the Rings like he was originally cast. Oh, he shot okay. scenes as Aragon, yeah, and yeah. Peter Jackson wasn't. Feeling it, happy. yeah. Well, Maybe he saw Queen of the Damned. And like, <laughs> no, what it was was is that him and F- um, Philippa Stevens, Philippa Boynes, Philippa yeah. Boynes, um, they sat down and they're just like, we've miscast this because Aragorn should be older than this, right? And they felt Townsend was too young, so they don't yeah, have yeah. to get rid of him. And after already filming stuff, I know yeah. that's brutal, man. Because Sean they, Bean had nine hours to decide whether yeah. he wanted to travel all the way to wow. New Zealand for like two years. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's crazy. I know. Not Think about, about that. Sean Bean, uh, v- oh, Vigo, Vigo sorry, Vigo, Vigo, Vigo Mortensen. Mortensen. Yeah. And of course, you know that old story is, is Vigo Mortensen was just like, I'd never read the book, and I said to my son, and he was like, Yeah, Dad, you got to be Aragorn. I'm like, Really? Sounds a bit too kind of hallmark for me, Vigo, but I appreciate the sentiment. I'm like, yeah, but yeah, wow. he had, yeah, he had like yeah, ten hours to make up his mind. <laughs> yeah, thank God he did. That's a massive decision. <laughs> huge, what a huge commitment. Yep. Yeah, yeah, got it that's right though. Yeah, I reckon. And then oh. James Nesbitt rocked up in The Hobbit, so... Yeah, he did as well. <laughs> Bringing it around. There you go. So what is Stuart Townsend? So he's, he's directing and, you know... I don't completely know. completely unrelated to this film, so I'm glad that we digress. <laughs> I, I don't even know how we got onto him, to be I honest. I have no idea what he's doing now. But Johnny Lee Miller feels like he's doing a bit more. <laughs> I feel like I still see him pop up and shit. Well, because he's doing Elementary, yeah. the TV oh, yeah, show. It's up to like five it. or six is seasons still, or something. It's yeah. still airing. He show, do you know, he showed wow. up... When I, when I was uh, in New York running yeah. this cafe... Uh, Johnny Lee Miller showed up with his, I assume is his girlfriend, could be his wife. Right, right. And of course, you know, being in train spotting and every Scotsman mm. in the world knows train spotting. And Plunkett and McLean. And Plunkett <laughs> and McLean. I <laughs> love Plunkett and McLean. Did you say Hackers? Um, oh no, Hackers is nah. classic. I got to get that on my Hack race. Hack the world. <laughs> but when when Johnny Lee Miller showed up, he came in. I'm not even joking. Like my butt puckered. I'm just like, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. I'm, this is I'm. He was like, he saw he the way you're looking at him in his butt pocket. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> and I was looking at him. I'm like, oh my god! Like this is that's fucking John Lee Miller. That's fucking yeah, John yeah. Lee Miller. And I completely fucking ignored him, pretending like I didn't know who he was. And I was talking to his girlfriend because his girlfriend's English as well. And I, right. you know, just got to the point where I was just like, you know, usual chit chat when you're making coffee or you know, fixing up the bill. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Uh, I said, you sound like you're fresh off the boat. She's like, nah, I've been here for a couple of years now. And like, I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah, right. Where are you from? She's like, oh yeah, I'm from London. I'm like, yeah. She says, what do you do here? She's like, oh, I'm an actress. And I'm like, ah, oh, cool, man, cool. And I goes like to Johnny Lee. I looked to Johnny. Then what I looked to do? Johnny Lee Miller. And I goes, what do you do? <laughs> And he goes, really? I swear to God. I looked at him, I goes, what are you there? He goes, I'm an actor. I goes, is it working for you? He goes, yeah, it seems to be all right. I'm like, good for you, man. And I went back to his girlfriend. I just completely nixed him. That's amazing. Just, just blanked him like I didn't fucking know that's or amazing. care who he was. As soon as he turned around and walked away, I was like, to every staff member, like, that's fucking sick. That's sick, boy. Oh my God, that was that was fucking Johnny Lee Miller. That was Johnny Lee Miller. I was losing dude, my dude. mind. You should have thrown a quote at him as he's walking that's out. so oh, yeah. well handled. Oh, man. It's incredible. It was, Losing my mind, and he was good in transporting too. He was very he was good. great. Yeah, it was like a. Real He's actually really good role. in Elementary. Elementary is not a great show, but Johnny yeah. Neal was the best thing in it. What a digression! 
Yeah, well, it was damn worth it because we would never have got that Johnny Lee Hill story. It's fucking killer. <laughs> okay, Hackers, that's coming up on Rewind and Digress as well. We've got too many. Too many. Well, calls. we've already done Hackers on before their time. Oh, yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. They didn't appreciate it. No. Yeah, I don't think all. they go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, it doesn't make any sense to you because you were there, man. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what it was fucking like <laughs> to get, <laughs> just to get onto the internet. It was a fucking nightmare. But like, they nailed the reference with the skateboard. Like, what's with the bad guy in a trench coat on a skateboard? Yeah. yeah. Good, you know, you know, they didn't get hackers, man, but they know about the cloud. They understand yeah. the cloud. <laughs> Sean. Sean, they know about the cloud. Now, look, I think it's a good time to wrap it up. As we always do before we wrap it up, I like to suggest the best version of the film to check out. And really, as far as I know, there's only one Blu-ray version doing the rounds, and that's the Scream Factory Blu-ray, and it's well worth it. It ports over all the special features from the US DVD, and it adds to it as well. It's got that... Uh, Horrors, Hello Grounds featurette that I spoke about mm-hmm. earlier, the locations one. It's also got a 48-minute documentary wow. on the film as well, which is really good. And they, they actually get everyone back to talk about it. Maybe really? not David Caruso, so they don't get him back. But they do get Brad Anderson to talk about it, which is like, mm. you know, he's a big, he's a heavy hitter these days. He doesn't have to do like, you know, some 48-minute featurette for something he's already done a commentary yeah, and yeah, yeah. making of, them, you know, on a previous DVD. Speaking of Caruso, when was the last time mm. Caruso was in it? Did he basically he just... doesn't do much these no, days Did he all. just, after CSI, did he just yeah, quit it? I think so. Because wow. I looked at my IDB and I'm like, he's only ever done like, say, 45 things, which was like, that doesn't seem like a lot because he's been in TV shows, he's done movies. But like, yeah, I looked, I don't think he's done anything since maybe 2010 or something. He did like guesting on other CSIs. Right, yeah, like yeah. One-off yeah, episodes in. here and there. But Just even collected paycheck and yeah. head out. But again. even then, when did when did Miami CSI Miami finish? No idea. Two thousand nine, no two thousand ten. Must be nearly ten years. You'd ago, have anyway. to care about such things to know that. Yeah, I like Caruso, man. No, Caruso's Kiss all right. Death with them. was shit. That was <laughs> a shit. Man. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, come on. Watch it again. What about no, Jade? Definitely. That's what when I, I feel like I was pretty sure the first time. No, because I thought it was going to be mega cool. Yeah. Sat down to watch it and I was like. Even Nick Cage, who I like in most things, not that he for lack of trying, I just wasn't very convinced. Nah, I, he was I'm, I'm, shit I'm, in it. I'm not. I, I yeah. urge you watch it again. I think I'd rather watch Jade. Hmm. I like Jade because that's got Linda Florentino in it. And, oh, you know, high five. Yeah, it's probably got a bit more to look at than you know the Kiss of Death. Great but, car you know, chase. You never know. Look, well. I might watch Kiss of Death if it's on the plane one day. <laughs> you know, it's in the in the in this classic section. I'm like, oh fuck, I'll give it another look. You, sh- you, you know. should really. I did should. like the delivery of Nick Cage's line where he does, you know, I was, you know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And it's like, it's an old phrase. Is that the one where he's pretty cool? I think he's. Is that the one where he's bench, bench, bench pressing a naked woman? Yeah, like, I think so. <laughs> I think that's what's happening um, in that particular moment. But the Screen Factory Blu-ray definitely worth checking out. That 48-minute feature is really kind of cool. Um, everything that was previously on yeah. there. Really well, can I can I say that? anyone that yeah. sort of stumbles across this at Cash Converters or whatever on yeah. DVD, the MRA transfer or the actual the print yeah. of the film is really good. Yeah, like yeah, I, I it watched is. it on DVD and it yeah. looked glorious on my big television. Yeah. Like yeah. It, yeah. I got a 75 yeah. inch and it looked Yeah, there was awesome. nothing jeopardizing the, no. the quality. Yeah, so pick it up. I mean, you're not going to pay any more than four bucks at cash. <laughs> and you get a reversible, you, you get a reversible idiot. slick. So I got mine for, which I never knew about. I got mine for a buck. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. pretty much, yeah. I, you know, I won't pay more than $3 for a DVD at Cashies unless it's something I know I can flip and sell for like 20 to $30. Well, I've, I, I, I'm so disappointed because I have to have the David Crusoe face version out yeah, because right. if I flip it over, it's got all the stickers it's from the video stickers. store. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I know. That David Crusoe, he's always eyeing you. Clearly, I wasn't trying to market the Crusoe factor when I had it on the shelf. No, no, quite, no. <laughs> I was yeah. like, no, we don't want that. Yeah, no, I know he stares, stares into you. Has he got a Mel Gibson stare or a know? brushy eyebrow stare when they oh, get he's close always up? Taking off the, the you know, the, the montages on yeah. YouTube of him taking the sunglasses off from you sunglasses know, acting. Some solid acting. Well, remember when I referenced that back earlier in the podcast? Yeah, no, yeah. well that, that, yeah, I don't actually. Know. Neither do I. If I'm being honest, did that really happen? Did you say that? <laughs> yes. Sure, no, or is this like a session nine thing I where you're losing your mind? No, I, yeah, I did. All right, well, there's that. <laughs> um, look, let's just let's just give a shout out to the Screaming Meanies who uh, provide the music for this podcast. Thank you very much, Screaming Meanies, and until next time, guys. Adios. Thank you.